León en su tenda. Bueno, poliki poliki, bagoas toki hartzen. Gure serlekuetara bueltatzen. Hor galduak daudenak ere ja sartzen. Arratsaldeko tarteari hasiera emateko unea heldu zaigu honezkero. Espero dugu gustora egotea. Ondo bazkaldu izana eta gogotxu egotea orain datorkiguna gogo sartzeko. E, ez dakite zuen artean komentatu duzuen, pentsatzen dut baietz, ekarpenak egin dituzuen hau seguru asko izan direla eta idatzi zere baten bat heldu zaigu, txarteletan jasoa beraz irakurriko ditugu ekarpen hoietako batzuk. Batek e, dio gureak eta bi egin beharko du, baina ez garagu bakarrik aurrera aterako. Gure hizkuntzaren eta iztun komunitatearen bizi iraupenerako ezin bestean hartu beharko ditugu euskaldunak, euskal iztunak ez direnak. Hori bat. Beste bat, hizkuntza politika globala behar da euskal herrian, galderak dira. Iztunen ordua da, autua da etorkizunaren gakoa, ezin ditugu iztunak ipara izearen kontra bidali, nor jarriko die aldeko aizea. Autua baina... Autua, baina hizkuntza berdintasunean izan beharko euskarak hizkuntza eta kultura sistema propioa eta nahikoa beharko. Nork eta nola jarriko. Eta irugarren ekarpen bat. Zer behar du euskarak hizkuntza bizia izateko hogeita bat garren gizaldian. Euskal Herria ipatzen ez duen adierazpenak neke sasaldezake hizkuntza gutxituaren berreskurapena. Euskarak Euskal Herria behar baitu hizkuntza bizia izango bada. Estandarizazioa zendotze bidean dagoela, hizkuntza bizia izateko Euskarak gutxienik iru gauza behar ditu, eta zerrendatzen ditu. Euskararen iztun elkartea, lurraldea, Euskal Herria, eta estatus soziopolitiko gutxienekoa, independentzia. Hortze idatziz jasotako ekarpenak, eta hauek e... Irakurrita, hauen berri izan da, aurrera goaz entzuteko deziratzen zondeten izlariarekin, izkuntzaren, ideologiaren eta kultura aktivismoaren inguruko ikerketa enografiko benetan interesgarria eginduen jakilin urlarekin. Berarekin egongo da Iñaki Martínez de Luna, presdago dagoeneko taldera gileko kidea, bera ere, Iñaki nahi duzunean. Eta... Jaqueline, mesedez, higo zaite zuere bai. Txalan diba bientzat. Oso ondo lagunduta, utziko zaitu zet. Aprobetzatuko dut, ez edo bitartean, bioar egiteko, aztu zaizkidanak. Zarera igo nahi baitu zue, ba, gaurko argazkiak, iruzkinak, lehen esan bezala gogoan izan traola ofizialak badaudela, traola ei euskara eta traola ei eun, zenbakitan. Eta agurrak bidali ere, gaurkoan streaming bidez jarraitzen ari gaituzten hoi, izan ere badira batzuk, ari direnak saioa online jarraitzen. Bera jek ere badilelako euskeraz garatu nahi duen komunitatearen parte beraz agurrak emendik eta jakin gaurkoan hitz egindako guztiak bideoan jaso direla eta eusko ikaskuntzaren webgunean izango duzuela ikusgai eme gaurtik aurrera eta informatuta egongo zaretela horren inguruan. Eta horrein bai, Iñaki Martínez de Luna, zurea daitza. Arratxaldeon, Iñaki, Arratxaldeon, Mertaratutako guztiei, arratxaldeon antolatzailei. Antolatzaileek aipamen merezi bat merezi, aipamen berezi bat merezi dute egindako lana benetan estimagarria delako. Eta eguneroko jardunean eta lanetan ibili direnek, Josune, Iñaki eta benetan lan itzela egin dutela. Hori esan da, burua etortzen zitzaidan, jakiri buruz ezatea Amerikatatik eta torki gula, jaki 
Baina, jaki ez da torkigu Ameriketatik. Parte batean bai, eta beste parte batean ez. Jaki ke bihotza, bihotzaren parte bat behintzat, gurean dauka, hemen dauka, eta hau ez da esaldi utxa. Berak, aipatuko duen bezala, aspaldi danik asita dagoen, hemengo kontukin, gora bera, aztertzen, sentitzen, bizitzen, karpenak egiten. Orduan, badauka bihotzaren parte bat hemen, eta bihotzarekin batera badauka ezagutza zientifikoa. Badauka jakituria jantzita dago gauzak aztertzeko momentuan. Izan ere, gizakiok denok bi gauzak behar ditugu normalean aurrera egin alizateko bihotza eta goizean askotan aipatu izan da ilusioa, aipatu izan da ametsak, aipatu izan dira aurrera begirako amets politxoiek, etorkizunari begirakoak, eta hori ezin bestekoa zaigu aurrera egin alizateko, baina horrekin batera baldin badator ezagutza zientifikoa, zendoa, onarri zendotik abiatzen dena, biak ustartuta batzutan bestetan kontrasanetan bihotzak zerbait eskatu, buruak beste zerbait, Juan Etorri hortan askotan murgiltzen garela, baina bien arteko dialektika hori oso beharrezkoa zaigu aurrera egin alizateko. Eta zentzu hortatik jakik abantaila du gurekin konparatuta. Guk bide hori izan dugu eta egin izan dugu gutako gehienak bihotzetik abiatua garelako Euskara lantzen. Eta gero janzten joan gara, referentzia bilatzen eta maila kognitibo eta zientifiko batean. Jakik bi ekarpen hoietatik arago beste bat ere badauka. Distantzia batzutan hartu beharrekoa dena. Eta gu geu denok zerbaitetan murgilduta gaudela, batzutan atzera pauso bat egiten dugu, egiten egin izan behar dugu, ez atzera kada bezala ulertuta baizik eta perspektiba hartzeko eta beste batzutan impulsoa jauzi egin alizateko. Jakik hori badauka, Juan Etorri hortan Amerika, hemen, hemen, Amerika, badauka distantzia hartzeko aukera hori eta horrek asko aberazten du analizirako aukera. Hortaz, jakik besteri gabe ongi etorrira Euskal Herrira, ongi etorria zure herrira, eta nahi duzunean. Bueno, arratza deon guztioi, eta ni ezker iniaki orkezpena gaitik, antolatzai guztioi zuen lana gatik eta Iñaki Markoren gombira gatik. Benetan posa hondia ematen dit hemen egotea. Zuekin, kongresu hontan. Benetan pena ematen dit ez egin itzaldi osoa euskeraz. Inglesera pasatuko naiz orain orduan parkatu, baina horra da izango da. I also want to thank, um, there are many people here that have helped me so much in my research over the years, as Inyaki said, I have been coming to the Basque Country since, you know, 1982 at least to do research and um, that research has only been possible because so many people helped me. Um, and many of them are here and I want to do what I haven't really been able to do. I wrote in my book, but I wasn't able to do sort of like in a collective way uh, like I can today, which is to thank so many people in Euskal Ginsa and in town halls and, you know, technicos and just everyday people who've helped me to understand the situation of the Basque language and its evolution. So thank you, everyone. Um, 
Uh, if I know anything, it's because of you, really. Um, so it's a real honor and pleasure for me to be here in this 100th anniversary um, to celebrate an, an institution, Usko Ikaskunsa, that has played such an important role in the um, future and creating the future of the Basque country and the history of the Basque country and the constitution of a Basque scholarly community. Um, for me, particularly, um, uh, it has a, a particular meaning because the discovery of the Congresses of 1918 and 1922 of Usko Ikaskunsa was a very important moment in my early work um, on the history of the Basque language. I found these um, unbelievable to me. I found the um, copies of the Congresses in the University of California Berkeley Library, and I began to read them. And um, you know the, the writings of Julio Urquijo, Urquijo and Luis de Elizalde and many others. And as you know, in the, in, if, if you've seen those conferences, um, it, they all bring all together all the different sections of the conference together so that language next to politics, next to social society and so on. So I got to really read about a moment that was a very key moment in the history of, um, of the Basque country and in the history of really the, um, the making of a Basque uh, nation and also the standardization of the Basque language. So I had I discovered these um, books when I had come back from 15 months of field research that had been, was research for my doctoral um, work um, where I was studying, just as I understood it, I was studying the recovery of the Basque language movement as an anthropologist by living with people who were you know, experiencing it, um, 1982, 1983. And as you may recall, that was a very auspicious time. You know, the Ley de Lusquera had just been passed. Um, there was a tremendous amount of activity and excitement about um, Basque. There was the activities of AECA, the ICASTOLAS, Muscada um, de Anusqueras, conferences about Batua, Ciadeco had just published El Conflicto Linguistico en Euskadi. You know, it was, it was a tremendous year to be in the Basque country um, for that research. So it was a new moment in 1982, 1983 for language revival then, as I think it is a new moment now. And I think, um, while I wrote this talk, before I was he heard the talks this morning, I really feel very convinced that there is a new moment now. There is a new feeling now, a new, a new era, in a way, beginning with the, um, uh, with the discourses about Basque recovery. So what, why, to go back to the con Congresses that I discovered from 1918 and 1922, um, I think what reading those, um, what those book, uh, the books and the ponencias really showed me was it helped me to understand some of the historical antecedents to what was happening in the early 80s um, that I was witnessing. Pasaría te avisua en Badagola y Chulpena. Ingelesez ondo jarritzerik ez duenaren txat itzulpena hartzeko aukera badagoela. Badazpada, inork ba, itzaliaren mamia galdu ez dadin. El, el, galdu ez desan. Ba, oixe, esan da, barkatu. No, no, no. Um, so as I was saying that the, the 1918 and 22 conferences helped me to see the historical antecedents of what was happening. And why do I say that? Um, well, these early interventions that I was reading um, in 1918 and 22 revealed to me a group of intellectuals, professionals, teachers, lawyers, engineers, doctors, who saw themselves at a vital crossroads in the history of their country. Industrialization and rapid urbanization had created a chaotic social order and a host of social problems that they were confronting, things from pollution to urban congestion to labor and class antagonism and other issues. <coughs> they were interested, these people who would come together in Onyati, um, in progress, in modernization, and in bringing a scientific and pragmatic orientation to creating a society and an economy and a language that could flourish in the new century ahead of them, while also preserving their unique cultural heritage and language. These were not antiquarians. They were not navel-gazing, lost in nostalgia for the past. Rather, they were attending scientific conferences, establishing relations with universities and libraries all over the world, 
and looking to bring home innovations in urban planning, agriculture, pedagogy, and more. So I think this is how it works. Um, some of these slides will have in Basque some of the uh, key ideas that I'll, that I'll be talking about. Um, what I saw, or what the conferences, the ponencias, let me see more specifically was the emergence of a distinctly modern understanding of language, which would begin to inform the strategies of language revitalization in the years ahead. They argued with their compatriots that folklore and festivals praising and exhibiting the language and its traditions would no longer be enough. It was not only the beauty of the poetry or establishing the origins of the language that mattered most now. For ensuring the vast future, new forms of knowledge had to be gathered and new questions had to be answered. Questions like what class of people spoke Busquera, where was it spoken, and what was needed to be able to introduce Basque into institutions of higher learning, into commerce, and into industry. Ensuring the continuity of the Basque language, culture, and identity, they argued, required not simply patriotism, it required active intervention, study, and management. It was the beginning of a sociological and not just a philological understanding of the language. It is at Usko y Cascunza's first conferences, I believe, and what I argue in, in my book, that we encounter an articulated vision of language as an object that can and should be planned. This is the view, I think, that has shaped a lot of the priorities for so much of the 20 and 21st century of language revitalization efforts, and that helped to make measurement and the enumeration of speakers, demo linguistics, a key resource in diagnosing Euskera's future. St statistics became the heartbeat of Euskera. So much was accomplished under this vision of language, but as I said, we and as I think everyone here has been saying, we've come to a time where the limits of this particular um, uh, okay oh thank you, thank you. no okay um, we've come to a time where the limits of this particular kind of language centered approach have become undeniable the challenge for a 21st century language revitalization is to operate with a speaker or people centered not language centered approach and that's what I want to talk about primarily today. So I'll talk about a little bit what the speaker-centered approach uh, consists of, although I think already Paula Casares has, has talked about that in her, um, in her intervention. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about, the, at the end, about the community capitals um, you know, a framework that uh, has been proposed in the last couple of years here. Um, so the challenge is how to abandon the conventional notion of language that has been embedded in so much of language planning and in everyday ways of thinking and talking about language. We need to ask new questions beyond how many people know Basque or their demographic profiles, when and where they speak and how much, although I would say that this is still valuable for us to know. But to move forward in language revitalization must be based on a more anthropological understanding of language. And of course, I'm an anthropologist, so I'm going to advocate for the anthropological understanding. But I also want to say that much of what I'm going to say. Vale. <laughs> Sorry, I knew this would be difficult for her. I'm sorry if it's been difficult to follow. Um, okay, so I just wanted to say that a lot of what I'm going to say about the speaker-centered approach is really um, echoing and in dialogue with Yonemirin Hernandez's call for an anthropological understanding of language that she made almost 10 years ago in the um, journal BAT. She articulated many of the basic premises of an anthropological approach, a vision of language that I'll be picking up on and elaborating. So I want to recognize that um, antecedent here. This shift in focus from language 
to people and their means of living and creating community with language is a vital part, as I see it, of the E5 project that is being proposed. It is vital to the creation of a more inclusive imaginary, the imagined futures of, a com of the community that wants to live in some fashion or other with Basque. And so that is what I want to talk about. Do I do it like this? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, this next section is called Languages Are Not Seeds. <laughs> the problem for language revitalization rests centrally with the notion of both language and also the idea that language communities are bounded homogenous entities, as if they were things in the world that have lifespans and die. You know, this is a common way to talk about, talk about language. This is the kind of language ideology that has informed much of the contemporary endangered language and minority language advocacy as we know it. First, let me say that I think that advocacy from organizations using that language ideology has done a lot for minority and endangered languages. Groups like Terra Lingua and many others have been very effective in raising awareness of the richness and value of language diversity. Their work has done a great deal to uh, advance the collection, documentation, and preservation of digital recordings of language, preserving them for posterity and future study, much like the underground seed vault that has been created in Norway, where the world's biodiversity of plants are safeguarded against future disasters. And here are just a couple of pictures from the, the seed vault of Norway. But languages really are not like seeds to be preserved. In a, in a really brilliant article, um, anthropologist Robert Moore deconstructs the epistemology of the digital archive, explaining how the architecture of the digital archive that is collecting specimens of different languages um, produces some important distortions about what languages, how languages are really lived by minority and endangered language speakers. What are these distortions? Oops, sorry. First, that they understand languages as these neatly bounded autonomous grammatical systems. And secondly, and very importantly, they erase the reality of the full range of multilingual, often multilingual resources that speakers of endangered languages actually use in their lives and that characterize the lives of people in communities where many minorita minoritized and endangered languages are spoken. So the anthropologist Robert Moore is really talking about endangered languages, many of which are indigenous. I think much of what he has to say applies in general for any minority language uh, community. I think we would do well to heed what the African linguist Sinfri Makoni calls the need to disinvent this understanding of language as we currently know it and to abandon the whole schema of concepts like mother tongue, native speakers, and reified languages that obscure the multiplicity and complexity of, of sociolinguistic practices. We need to take up a speaker-centered view of language. What does that mean? Linguistic anthropologists prefer to think of language not, languages not as things to be planned or seeds to be stored, but as social action. More than a set of grammatical rules and vocabulary, languages are an instrument in a dynamic practice, right? An instrument for the expression of identities and embedded in the dynamics of creating and maintaining social relationships, social hierarchies, and belonging in particular social groups. We've already heard that expressed in various ways today. Oops, okay, don't turn off. okay. Speech is relational. It connects us to people, right? It is shaped by and contributes to social hierarchy, and it is world-making, right? So as um, Yonamena Hernandez explained in her article, anthropologists give special importance to a couple of features I want to signal about language, indexicality and heteroglossia. Now these are, um, especially the first term, not an everyday term for people to encounter, but I just, they just want to use them to, re, to remind us of a very basic thing about language. 
and that is that the significance or the meaning of what we, or, uh, our speech does not come just obviously from the denotational um, significance of the words as is obvious to us, but also from the fact of the subtle aspects of all these other features of language, intonation, the particular vocabulary, morphological features in our language, our verbal strategies. All of these features are also, they have indexical properties. They point to social features that are associated with these particular features of language, right? That's the indexicality of language. It's never just the denotational, but also what it's pointing to of other usages and the social groups that use those elements of language, right? We're all very dexterous in doing this, in using language and in really unconsciously mobilizing the indexical uh, feature of language. And the heteroglossia is another term to, to refer to the fact, that, and Hernandez talks about this very well, um, explains it more fully than I'm going to, is that our usage of any feature of language is always also invoking previous usages or voices that are associated with these elements of language. So that language is in a sense full of voices, full of references to other usage, other groups that come before us, right? And we make very good use of this as speakers and it's what gives speech such richness and complexity. This feature of language this aspect of language is very crucial to this being having a speaker-centered approach to language. To be speaker-centered is to recognize for, then that we need to broaden the field of vision to not focus on a language, the amount or the variety chosen, but rather to situate speakers' dynamic use of language in a larger understanding of their lives. Here then is um, how Yonamita Hernandez explains the shift in perspective. These are her, her questions about what the shift in perspective signifies, so I'll just let you read that for a minute. Okay. Um, so, to put in my own words, um, then we need to, as I said, situate the use of language in a broader context of the lives of, the, of speakers, um, in which um, what influences them is not, um, sorry, I'm just translating here from, <laughs> from Spanish that I had written this originally. Um, what, men, what, what we should be looking at, in other words, is not just you know, the code choice, which I think has been the biggest question that we've been asking, which language do they choose and why do they choose that? But all the m other elements that, Im that people are doing when they're speaking, all the other elements that they're, they're drawing upon when they're speaking. To get at that then, if we want to understand what people are doing with language, which is the speaker-centered approach, we need another ap conceptual apparatus and a methodological apparatus that would include ethnographic studies based in the contextualized description of how people use language. So anthropologists really, in many ways, um, have left aside uh, the term language as a whole and now tend to use much more the concept of repertoires, right? Repertoires is our unit of analysis. Um, and also we tend to look at the idea of linguistic identity as not as something that is static that you get in, obtain early in your life and have for the rest of your life, but rather as ideas, um, you know, we, we're, we're moving more towards notions of identity that are more dynamic, more performative, and towards the concept of a communicative repertoire, right? In a repertoire of a speaker, uh, it refers then to all the re linguistic resources that an, a speaker would have acquired and is able to use. This may consist of more than one language, but it can be also different registers, dialects, and other features, right? So repertoire over language. 
The sociolinguist um, Jan Blomart has written about this and very inter the notion of repertoire, and it's also being used quite a bit, for example, in the work being done in the United States on Latinos and the way in which they use Spanish and English and their, their complex um, and dexterous verbal repertoires. Um, one can look to the work of Jonathan Rosa, Nelson Flores, for just a couple of examples. The concept of repertoire can be useful for us to set aside then the, the focus on the measurement of the use of codes and to set aside um, also to one side the classification of speakers um, into speakers of one language or other and get dig more into what languages I say, what speakers I say are doing with their linguistic resources. This is what the speaker-centered approach is about. So given that we know that the, Basque, the population of Basque speakers has been changing and diversifying dramatically, we can also expect that the ways of relating to and speaking Basque have also diversified. There is, as we have heard today, and as I know that all of you know very well, a whole generation of people who have learned Basque outside of the home. They are the majority of young people today, and they have distinct profiles, distinct identifications, different ways of learning Basque, and along that, with that, different ways of engaging with Basque in their lives, with their coworkers, with their friends, with their children, with social media, and so on. As Hernanda stated back in 2008, the dichotomous view of Basques versus Spanish speakers and communities and identities do not serve us well in this context, if they ever did. So I just want to mention, give it a little example from the research project that I did with my colleagues, Estia Amorortu, Ana Ortega, and Johnny Gorigolzarri, on um, new speakers that we um, did a few years ago. Um, that was in a preliminary attempt to try to get, grasp the different ways that new speakers have uh, learned Basque and incorporated it into their lives and their identities. And so I just thought I'd, I'd give you three, just really quickly, again, three examples of three different kinds of new speakers and therefore three different ways of engaging uh, with Basque. And these are all pseudonyms of, of people that we interviewed um, in the new speaker project. And the first one, oh, I'll give the name Ramon. He was um, a carpenter, he is a carpenter in a small town and he learned Basque in school but he also learned a lot of Basque with his friends um, in, in um, actually in a church group, a siorsa group, um, and also in sports. So he really learned the local vernacular of Basque. He learned how to speak in Ica, and he was very proud of it. He said, you know, I'm a new speaker, but I'm more than that. I speak like the people here. And he, was, he was, uh, had the vernacular Basque, and he was proud of it and felt very integrated with the Basque-speaking community. On the other hand, we had a, a university professor who was from the um, Bilbao area, from a working class, largely Spanish-speaking part of Bilbao. And she had learned Basque very well. Um, she learned Batua. And um, when I asked her, would you want to learn vernacular Basque? Would you like to speak, you know, in more, in, you know, vernacular forms of, uh, uh, you know, that are spoken, not just the standard. She was like, I have no interest in that. This is all I, this is good for me, and I had to learn Basque to do my job, and that's all I want to do. I don't use it in my everyday life outside of work. And then the person I'll call Miren um, was about a 20-year-old. Um, these other people were about in their 40s. Miren is in her 20s, and she's a university student. And she knows Basque and Spanish very well. She was schooled in immersion schools, and she controlled both languages quite well. And um, it was interesting what she had to say about Basque. She said, you know, I just don't want anybody to tell me what language I should speak. I speak whatever I want to speak, whenever I do, but I don't want to feel guilty about what language I choose, you know. So really, really very different profiles of, of the people that are all, in a sense, in this category of new speaker. Our, our research showed us that some feel identified and proud of their fluency in the local Uskaldun register, others that didn't aspire to that, to that fluency, um, and others who didn't have access to that, to, you know, local registers or local vernaculars. So a great deal of, of variety um, in that kind of um, world. Given that ways of speaking are vehicles for expressing our effective attachment to places, to particular communities of practice, to neighborhoods, and to activities, how can the planning of the E5 project going forward respect 
these and other varied kinds of attachments and ways of engaging with Basque that we have yet to encounter? That is a key question. How can, so I pose the question for myself this way, how can participatory planning create the possibilities for an expansive participation in the design of the future? So let me turn then to the speaker-centeredness as it relates to community capitals um, framework. The community capitals framework that is uh, currently uh, underway is an approach that you've already heard, so I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because Inyaki laid it out very well for those of you who are here this morning. Is an approach bar borrowed from some of the newer forms of organizational management and planning, particularly affirmative inquiry and participatory design thinking. And I think we haven't said that much today about participatory design thinking, but I'm going to say a little bit more about that. Um, I want to say, comment first just a, a couple, about some of the things that I see as positive um, about this method that's being proposed and also raise some concerns I have and also what I see as some of the distinctive and positive strengths of the Basque language revival movement as a whole that I think would be wise to continue. So here are some of the features. First, the strategy of affirmative action that is used in the community capitals framework um, as Iñaki explained, starts from the premise of asking what are our strengths? What do we have that we can work with, right? T typically, language planning starts with deficit. What are the problems? What, where, where, where we don't have enough of Basque? Where do we need to, you know, supplement? And so instead of problems, it's a refocus to strengths, right? And it asks um, people to draw upon and imagine and, uh, and then therefore enable new scenarios for living in and with Basque. This is a very important shift in planning discourse, one that starts with an assessment of strengths, as I said, instead of deficits, and give rec gives recognition to the importance, I think, of emotions, desire in particular, as well as imagination, as we heard the young people talking about imagination, right? With an emphasis on the generative and the creative, right? The design approach that starts with desires provides the elements for imagining new kinds of linguistic futures distinct from uh, what is in linguistic anthropology called monoglot ideology. Um, that, that monoglot ideology, and I'll explain what that is, has reigned supreme. And this is the idea, monoglot ideology is not the same thing as monolingual. Okay. Monoglot means that it's this ideology that every language, it's a hierarchical idea of every language must have a norm and the norm is the preferred form of the language, right? Monoglot, one form is and a hierarchical view of those forms. It is also in, in folded into monoglot ideology into the very common uh, notion that has driven so much of our language ideology of one nation, one language, one people, right? So I think this model has the potential to move us outside of that kind of thinking, outside of that, that ideology. It lays open the question, what are the futures, in the plural, that the communities of speakers or aspiring speakers of small languages desire? It does not have to be the reproduction of the imaginary of a majority language. I believe that, you know, this is what to me excites me about this approach. The possibility of an imaginary from the margins of my majority languages. An imaginary of language of, created from the perspective and the experiences of, a small, of small language communities could possibly have the potential to be something more radical and more liberatory. So as I said, I, I, um, I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, to, for this to be what scholars um, in design thinking call transition design. And I'll come back to that concept of transition design. But I want to mention two other positive features of the community capitals framework before I talk about that. Um, one is the idea of community that's being used, that, the, that it's the community that's the focus, but also not a community that's defined on the basis of a linguistic profile, not just best speakers of this profile or that profile. It's not linguistically defined nor ethnically defined identity. It is defined um, by a shared aspiration, really, um, 
Uh, it is a self-ascribed community of practice. People who come together, not based on their identity, but on their common activity and goals. I especially applaud the commitment to polycentrism, to collecting various kinds of imagined scenarios from people active in different walks of life, and to synchronizing those goals rather than seeking uniformity in outlook. And finally, the commitment to participatory methods. The, you know, I heard from many people who are here that participated in the seminars that were taking place over the last two years about coming together with the balls and the post-its and putting together, you know, participating collectively in designing what futures might be, you know, what resources are there and so on. So the ability to, I think, as an observer of the Basque language movement, let's see how I'm doing for time, okay. Um, the ability to mobilize popular participation in language revitalization has been, I think, one of the real strengths and positive attributes of the Basque language movement. This is something that I don't think has been very well known outside of Euskaleria. From the early mobilization of everyday citizens in Icastolas, the decentralized network of Euskaltegis and Gauescolas in the early AEK, to the later emergence of Euskera El Carteac, um, later grouped together in Topaguniak and more, this capacity that Bas have to come together, to form associations, to cooperate and work together, some of the values that um, uh, Gorka w mentioned uh, in his uh, intervention, this is truly a cultural resource that has served the language movement very well. Then, as now, community involvement, building consensus, and a sense of ownership in the process of reclaiming the language including tolerance for critique, asking questions, and reassessment of strategy. These are key, I think, to the resilience of this particular movement. So I will confess, then, this is really powerful things, positive things. I confess that I had a reaction that I bet other people have had uh, uh, to the concept of capital, right? I mean, we can't sort of like hear the word capital and not kind of go, hmm. Um, at the very least, you know, I mean, it is a word. It is a word. It, we don't want to make too much about words, but on the other hand, we don't want to ignore them either. And at the very least, I think that, you know, as we use the concept of community capitals, we want to bring to this analysis or to the use of these concepts and the evaluation of capital the always important recognition that access and benefits of capital are often unequal, right? So capital is just not there to be used by everyone equally. It's often a very unequal terrain. I prefer myself the term resources, um, and that's because in part, I, you know, I think we live, and I, I, we, I, we do live, not just I think, we live in a neoliberalized economy in which the logics of the market have co and, the, and the language of the market have colonized a large part of our social world and value system. We are constantly being steered towards and participating in valuation systems based on market metrics. So colleagues of mine who are out there doing research with students, university students, about why they are learning languages, for example, f are finding that students talk very much about the value of language in terms of its market value, who talk about themselves as being entrepreneurs of, them, of their own lives, right? Accumulating assets, value added, right? So we, we see this language everywhere, and it's definitely in the world of language um, acquisition. So um, we could sell Basque that way, and I think you know there, there's good examples of that. And in the world we inhabit, it might be politically strategic, um, as uh, I know Siadeco has recently done, to quantify the economic value of Basque. If nothing else, that quantification that they, that they published, uh, some of you may have seen, um, was a spectacular refutation of the prejudice that small languages have no economic value. Of course they do, and it can be actually quantified, right? But I think these metrics and markets don't ultimately serve us very well. Um, it's right underneath me, but I'm covering it up. Um, we cannot forget that it is capitalism itself that has in many ways contributed to the value system and the political economy that works against small languages. So I, I want to encourage as radical a design imaginary as possible to become transition activists and designers for how to live in a small language. From my work over the last years, I see resources that can serve this movement very well. 
As I've said, the underlying social values of collective work, the capacity to mobilize, to innovate, the value placed on social solidarity are extraordinary in the Basque society and are tremendous assets. What other assets and contexts allow us to experience in what I want to call maybe even we could go so far as to call it an alternative ontology of language, another, by which I mean another way of imagining how to live with a language differently. And so I want to draw, um, even though a lot of people have done it, I want to go look at Berso Aritza as an example of a possible ontology, not because it is the only one, but it is one that I think works well for what I want to say. So Yuna Miren and Nana, interestingly, also talks about Berso Aritza in her article as being a kind of, you know, microcosm of the Basque-speaking community. Well, I want to talk about it not, not so much as a microcosm, as much as, as a resource and a different way of living or experiencing Basque. Um, I say this because I observe in Berso Aritza, maybe you do as well, a stance towards language that is quite different from the dominant monoglot, monetized, inherently hierarchical language ideology that surrounds us. That was, awesome. that was a mouthful, I'll say it again. An alternative for, to the dominant monoglot, monetized, and inherently hierarchical language ideology that surrounds us. In Berso Aritza, um, one can see language as being conceived not so much as an individual possession as it is a kind of commons, right? Not as an object to be governed, an innumerable thing with rates of growth and decline, but as a place where imagination, creativity, and surprise prevail over the goals of parity with ma majority languages or the logic of standardized norms. Here is a potentially valuable resource to draw upon for imagining a more solidary and more playful relationship to Basque. I don't know which way I'm supposed to point it. Okay, so that is kind of what I was just saying. Okay. At the heart of improvisation, as you may know, for those of you who may read about improvisation, is a stance of yes and. That is, yet building upon the speech of those that come before them, this, this, you know, and going forward, right? This is the principle of dialogical co-creation, right? And this principle is what design thinking is at, at its best is about. I think we could take another example from Versailles. So it could be um, theater that was talked to us by one of the young people here. Theater is this space for imagination. Theater is this place for creativity with language and experiencing language as dialogical co-creation. So my final thoughts. In Reclaiming Bass, the book I wrote um, now a, f a few years ago, I said that language revitalization movements are never just preserving a language. Right? They are always also agents in shaping and changing how people understand what language is. This Congress, 100 years ago, helped to do exactly that, to launch the modern era of language planning. The E5 project, using the community capitals framework, presents us with a new methodology that seeks to be more open to imagination. And as I said, I want to encourage an alignment with transition thinking and transition design. And this is one of my favorite books in it, so I, I give you the title of um, this recent book um, talking about and describing transition design. The transition discourses and movement emerging in the global south and in the global north that are calling for a rupture with the capitalist and patriarchal logics of development and perpetual growth that are arguing for values of community, for values of well-being, um, um, have brought, you know, are, argue that there is no fixing to those systems of the past, that we must really we redefine well-being, or as they say in Latin America, el buen vivir, you know, that we must recognize not individualism, but radical interdependence. It is a transition to a paradigmatic, ontological shift in plural world making, transition design is. The transition activists do not say practically anything about where language might fit into this paradigmatic shift. We, you, all of us have to invent that bridge to create that dialogue with them. 
Like transition thinkers, I don't think we can find a place for small languages without an ontological or epistemological shift of the dominant ways of thinking about language and about life in capitalist modernity. These ways have not served small languages or really anyone very well. So much has been accomplished. You and the people before you have accomplished so much and it's really extraordinary. Um, as transition theorist Thomas Berry has said well, we are now between two stories. The old paradigm doesn't work and the new one has yet to be defined. In language revitalization, it may, be the same, it may be similar. It is time to design what living in a small language can mean today. So as this project moves forward, we can and should embrace the same responsibility that the members of the first Congress of Usko y Cascunza felt to be agents in shaping how language is understood by combining this process of not just design, but transition design that will have a pluralist, speaker-centered approach to language and a capacity to accept diverse ways of living in and with Euskera, from the Bersolari to the code switching new speaker to the occasional user to this passive speaker, all is having a legitimate place in the larger social world of Basque. I think much of the success of this new and exciting venture will depend on how it is carried out and whether it can invite truly pluralist experiences from the margins as well as the center of Euskal Ginza. So thank you very much. Uh, anyway, I can't give it to you. Es que recasco ya que eh no la ya que en chincho y sanden de mora de quin aunque era la ucabo al era bachu que y teco esta sube que salancha quedó pentsatu bitartean eh aseko naiz ni galdea batekin zuen baimenarekin aipatu duzu eh komunikaziorako errepertorioa aipatu duzu ikuspegi eh pluriversoa edo eta zalantza pizten zait ea hori nola eskontzen den eh hizkuntza bat herri bezela hizkuntza hegemoniko bat izatearen asmoarekin. So how would how do you link that view of the repertoire with a dominant uh -huh. language? Yeah. Well, I'm mean, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Should I be up there? Maybe up there? Mm. You want That's a good. That's a good question. I mean, um, I guess it depends what we're, what we're trying to do. You know, um, I think we can't figure out what to do if we want to invite more people into the Basque speaking world, and that's what I think is the project. You know, invite more people in, design scenarios that can be inclusive, right? Um, if we want to do that, we have to understand what language, I think this is, a, you know, what Paula was saying too, what, what, what does language mean to people? You know, what, what it, where does it fit into their lives so that we can understand whether they're, what attracts them to a language, um, you know, whether they have interest in it, whether they identify with it or they don't identify with it. So for that, I think we need to have this conceptual approach of looking at their whole repertoire and understanding where this one variety fits in there and, and the way that they're modifying that variety because speakers are always modifying and you know how they use language. Um, so if we want to understand what it means to create scenarios we need these approaches. So I don't see them, I, I see the approach that I, I'm trying to give, give uh, my sense of like the kind of intellectual scholarly approach that we need to understand speakers. And then what we do with that will be up to what people want to do with it. I don't know if that's answered it, but yeah. I will ask you to stay there. I'll stay here. <laughs>
Chanda Savali Dago, Galdera que iteco, Mercedes Galdera que Sanda itesen, es ponencia chiquiac, en Taurela, parte archeco, el va hogar checo, esta parte archeco, hogar checo. Señor Anima Chanda, Xavier Mercedes, va a dar carta micro. Bai, lehen eh, aipatu dezu, eh, izan sinale hemen, eh, bueno, ezagutzen dezula gure egoera, orain dela hogei urtetik, ona. Eta, eh, ze, o sea, ze hausnarketa egingo zen duen, pixkate hogei urte hauetako bilaka erari buru. Ze aldaketak egon diren, zure ikuspuntutik, yeah. onerako, txarerako, ze aldaketak yeah, egon yeah. diren. Ok. Um, was uh, our, our very first uh, ponencia this morning by, was it, was it Mikel? Who was the very first? Yeah, there you are, <laughs> there you are. Um, I thought you uh, expressed a lot of the, the changes that I have seen too, but I'll just express to you that one, one of the things that, you know, as coming from the outside to come very naively to go do field research in the, in the town of Usurville uh, where I was living, um, I, from the, everything that I had read about language and the Basque nationalist movement had prepared me to come to a place that people would, you know, they were going to recover the language as part of nation building, you know, and that's what, that's what I understood and then I wanted to see, you know, how did immigrants that were coming and working in the factories understood and related to that movement and so, so it's language and nation building and this is what I thought, you know. And one of the things that really surprised me that I think has changed was how uh, divided the society, the, the, the pro-Basque world was. And I think that you had mentioned this, you know. Polarization was one of the things I did not expect between the political parties. You know, you could, it was very hard to do things in common. So you had the, the HB event and you had the PNV event and then you had all these things, you know, mirroring each other. So this polarization is something I think is really, really diminished and that is very, very good, I think. Um, and, and so it's, that was very interesting to watch the, the really intentional work uh, and it didn't just happen, you know. I mean, it, I think it was very intentional too that people worked at it to make that happen. Um, and you could see that very much in, in the Euskara Elkarteak movement in the 90s um, that really just tried to separate language from political parties, uh, po from political party signs. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And of course, you know, the, the tremendous change in the demographic profile of the, of the Basque speaking community. So politically, I would say that's one thing. I mean, I don't think it's the only thing. There's institu institutionalization of the movement. Um, you know, you have entities now like Conseiua, Topagonia. I mean, you have very different, you have a lot of entities now and a tremendous amount um, that are working in Euskalginsa. So that Euskalginsa has changed a lot from being, a, you know, from the days of Euskaleria and Euskaraz, you know, which was very, very different kind of, in English we would say a different vibe. It was a different feeling about language revitalization. Este galderarik. First, thank you very much. Because it was a wonderful talk, in my opinion. Um, I, um, I took a few words, right, that you said, like, the thing is to share that they, we, we have to share the goals, we have to share interest, creativities, and you give it to us, for example, the sample of the Bertolariza, right? Yeah. And for me, um, our difficulty in this moment maybe from the linguistic point of view, from the language planning point of view, is that we were used to think all, always on the whole community. Like planning practice for the whole community. And now we have to start thinking on 
mm, activities, share goals, share interests. Particularly, I would say that in the case of the young people, that's particularly yeah. important yeah. because they don't feel in an, like a that the, the, the community itself is the important thing. Yeah. They think that it's their interest. Yeah. They want to share with other young people things, in Basque, in English, in French, in any language, but they want to share interest more yeah. than languages. And the language is only an instrument right. for them. Particularly, for example, in the digital world, they would always say that our t and young people are 100% of the time, almost 100% of the time, in their mobiles or any digital device, right? So, in your opinion, which are the first steps that we have to do in order to be able to improve in this interest, goals, creative activities? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it'll probably be an answer that isn't all that satisfying, but I think that um, it is to talk to people about what they want to do. I mean, I don't think we can do it ourselves. We, the planners should imagine it in their heads. I think this consultation process is the thing that has to continue. We just uh, today, I thought it was tremendous that young people were invited here to talk about what they care about, you know. If we want to know what's, you know, I could say, well, I think, act, I think an activity-focused language planning is a good way to go. Gardening, theater, what do people, what are they interested in? And they do that in and through the language. I do think that. But I think what we have to find out is what do young people think? What do, what do mothers who have small children going to school and learning best, what do they, what do they want? What do they, what do they need? You know, so I think the the really amazing thing about the, you know, we say in English, the takeaway, the thing to take out of this experiment is the method more than the identification of the goal. The goals will probably always be changing, but the method of participatory design, part, it, we call it that now, but it's consultation. It's about coming together and talking and like, like we are here you know, coming together and talking and debating and questioning and asking. So for me, that is, that is the, the key, you know. Um, and that's why these values that Gorka was talking about, about the, you know, the, the collaboration spirit, I, I, I don't want to be naive about that. I don't think it's easy. No, it's not easy. And not everybody's collaborating, you know, not everybody feels all positive about it. But I do think that, as, and, and, and the diversity of the collaboration, will, who do we bring to the table to talk? Is it the same people as always? This has been a very divided society, you know? There's no question, it's been a, had a, had a very strong divisions. You know, I see those divisions, you know, less strong, as I said, in the, in the world of Basque now than they were before. But still in all, how, I think it's important to get as much diversity in the participation as possible to, to understand what people want. Yeah. Is that my time shut up? Besterik, azkeneko galderaren bat. Gure jakin min guztiak azabete dituzula, eskerrik asko, jaki. Mia, mia esker, jakelin eta inaki eduki interesgarria gatik eta pasientzia gatik ere izan ere bieten aldi izan da ere, tarte benetan borobila eskaini duzu eta oso eskertzeko da, eskerrik asko. Ego kitzapen gaitasuna erakutsi duzue eta inzuzen ere lehen irakurri gabe geratu zaigun ekarpen batek ere ego kitzeko gaitasunaz aritzen da. Patsi izaezek iratzi du eta irakurriko dugu, ba, egindako guztiak irakurriko genituela esan dugulako beraz hortze bere hausnark eta Euskararen etorkizuna irabazteko behar naturala sortu. Izkuntza autuari eragiteko, izkuntza erabiltzeko behar naturala sortu behar da. Euskararen aldeko egoera edo gizarte egitura batean murgildut aurkitzen denak, nahiz eta gareraz edo erdaraz obeto moldatu, jarrera gokitzaie hartuko du, eta euskaraz egiten 
da gizarte egitura horretatik kanpo ez gelditzeko. Behar naturaletik sortutako praktika etengabeak ekarriko dio hizkuntza barneratzea eta gero eta errezago erabiltzea. Hortze jasotako beste ekarpen hori eta e, zuen tokietara bueltatu zaitezkete mesedez. Izan ere, urrengo gonbidatuak jasoko ditugu orain, igoko dira jarraian, adirazpena irakurtzeko ordua heldu delako, eboz kongresuaren adirazpena ezagutzeko ordua, hemen mai batzuk jarri dira, ari dira ja sinatzeko horriak eta adirazpena bertan kokatzen, eta adirazpen horren irakurketa egiteko luzuzko bide lagunak izango ditugu, e, esan adirazpenarekin bat egitekotan, gero izango duzuela sinatzeko aukera, baina beto asalduko digute jarraian, Bainat garaiok eta kike amonarizek. Igo mesedez. Zan bezala beraiek, ebost kongresuko adirazpena irakurriko dute jarraian. Ebost kongresuaren adirazpena. Euskararen etorkizuneko estenarioak elkarrekin eraikitzen. Hau da, adirazpen honen testu ingurua. Eusko ikaskuntzaren mendeurrenari begira, abiatu ziren bost lanildoen artean, e bost izenekoak, Euskararen etorkizuneko estenarioak elkarrekin eraikitzen, 2018-ko urriaren emeretzian burutu du bere kongresua gazteizen. Bertaratuok, lanildo honetan egindako lanaren ondorio den e bost kongresua den adirazpen hau sinatzen dugu, Euskal Gizarteari, erakundei eta eragilei eskaintzeko. Euskaraz bizi, garatu eta munduratu nahi duen komunitateak behar duen akordio sozial eta politiko sendo baten abia puntu gisa. Epoz dinamikaren lana Eusko ikaskuntzak sortutako talde eragile bate gidatu du eta iru minte girekitan mamitu da. Erakundeen eta gizarte esparru zabaleko eragile askoren partaidetza handiarekin. Metodologia berritzailea erabili da. Hausnarketaren fokua ez da Euskararen egoera izan bere komunitatearen kapitalak baizik. Eta kapital ezberdinetan dituen edota behar dituen aktiboetan zentratu da. Horren bestez, lehenik, komunitateak sei kapitaletan egun dituen aktiboak identifikatu ziren eta kapital aktiboen mapa osatu zen. Ondoren, 2008ko jomugan, sei kapital horietan nahi lirateken aktiboen konstelazioak irudikatu ziren. Eta azkenik, konstelazioiek eraikitzeko ekinbide gakoen arkitektura landu da. Egindakoaren emaitzak eta xietasunak kongresuaren liburu zurian daude jasota. Adierazpen honek proposamen nagusiak labur biltzen ditu eta akulu funtzioa izan nahi du prozesuaren emaitzak gauzatu daitzazen. Adierazpen honen proposamena irakurriko dugu orain. Identifikatu diren kapitaletan zelikatuta, zedarritutako ekinbiden funtsa honela labur biltzen da. Azteko, giza kapitala handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak. Iru dira aktiboak, ulermena, gaitasuna eta portaera aktiboak. Eta ekin bide bana dute aktiboak bakoitzak. Lehen ekin bide hau onako hau da, ulermen unibertsala. Iztunen arteko izkuntza gatazkak enditze aldera eta elkarbizitza lingüistikoaren berme egisa, ulermen unibertsala lortzeko estrategia ezartzea, izkuntza libreki autatzea posible izan dadin berdintasun baldintzetan. Bigarren ekin bidea izkuntza gaitasuna. Alde batetik, biziberritze prozesua elikatzeko ezkuntza sistema eraldatzea, izkuntza nekotasuna berma dezan, eta bestetik, Euskalduntze sistema erritar guztien eskura jartzea, doan eta malgu. Bihildo hauetan lortu beharrekoa da iztun funtzionala, Euskaraz gutxienez, gaztelaniaz edo frantxesez bezain ondo moldatuko dena, eta irugarrenekin bidea, aktibazioa eta jarrerak. Euskara edatzearekin batera, izkuntzaren balioen kontzientzia garatzea, iztunaren atxikimendua eta jarrera aktiboa eragiteko. Kapital soziala handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak. Iru kapital aipatu dira. Arauak, Euskal Gintza, Aliantzak eta Atxikimendua. Eta ekinbideak onako hauek. Izkuntza eskubideak eta arauak. Gizartean Euskarak duen presentzia areagotzeko eta izkuntza berdintasuna bermatzeko, izkuntza eskubideak jartzea beste eskubide sozialen pare, legedian eta esparru guztietako arauetan txertatuta. Bide horretan, aintza tartzekoa da, 2008an donostian sinatutako izkuntza eskubideen protokoloa. Euskal Gintza. Euskararen komunitatean autoeratu den Euskal Gintza biziberritzea, eraldatzea eta indartzea, 
baliabide eta funtzio egokiak esleituta eta modu eraginkorrean koordinatuta esparru estrategikoetan eragin ahalmena izan dezan Euskararen mesedetan. Aliantzak, Euskara biziberritzeko dinamika gizartearen bizkarrezurra diren beste hainbat dinamika sozioekonomiko eta kulturalekin ustartzea elkar indartzeko. Eta azkena gizarte babesa, Euskararekiko atxikimenduak gizartean ere elikatzea eta garatzea horretarako behar diren mezuak eta ezagutza edatuz. Kultura kapitala handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak. Aktiboak onako hauek, identitatea, sorkuntza eta ezagutza. Ekinbideak berriz ondorengoak. Lena, Euskal identitatea Euskaraz. Gizartearen esparru guztietan Euskarazko ereduak edatuko dituen proposamen multimodala lantzea. Kanal guztietan, erregistro formalak eta informalak erabilita. Bigarrena, sorkuntza eta kontsumoa. Euskal edukien sorkuntza eta kontsumoa sustatzeko, sortzaien autoantolak eta eta babes publiko areagotzea, eta masa kontsumoko produktuen artean Euskarazkoei tokia egitea. Eta irugarrena, ezagutzaren kudeak eta. Kulturaren transmisioa gero eta gehiago egiten denez internet bidez, Euskarazko edo Euskararen inguruko edukiak sistematikoki jasotzea, gordetzea, eta modurik erabilgarrienean eskaintzea, Euskal Liburutegi Nazionalak lituzkeen funtzioen baitan. Azpigitura kapitala handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak. Kasu honetan, aipatu diren aktiboak, plangintza, komunikabideak eta ezagutza dira. Eta ekinbideak, onako hauek. Administrazioa eta zerbitzuak euskalduntzeko plangintza. Epe luzeko plangintza adostea, eragile publiko eta sozialen artean, Administrazioak, irakaskuntza eta zerbitzuak euskalduntzeko, Euskal Iztunaren autoa erosoa bihur dadin eta bere eskubideak bermatu daitezen. Komunikabideen sistema. Euskarazko komunikabideen garapena bermatuko eta gidatuko duen lankidetza publiko sozial eraikitzea, komunikabideok sistema gisa funtzionatuz Euskararen zat egemonia esparruak irabaz ditzaten. Eta soziolinguistikaren ezagutza. Euskararen biziberritze prozesuaren gaineko ikerketa sistemaktikoa eta praktikari lotua egituratzea soziolinguistika zentru batean, jakinduria gune guztien zarea osatuta eta ekintzarekin ustartuta. Kapital ekonomikoa handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak. Aktiboak, iru. Lan izkuntza, industria eta baliabideak. Ekinbideak, ondorengoak. Euskara lan izkuntza, bereziki gazteentzat. Arauak, diskurtsoak eta bultzadak metatzea enpresa nagusietan izkuntza eskakizunak sistematikoki ezarri daitezen lanpostuak betetzeko, eta euskarazko lan zirkuituak sortzeko. Bigarrena, euskararen industria. Izkuntzaren industria artikulatzea eta bideratzea ekonomia esparruetan gero eta eragin handiagoa izatera. Euskararen sektore politiko-ekonomikoak pixua izan dezan estrategia eta erabaki nagusietan. Irugarrena, baliabideak euskararen zat. Lankidetza publiko soziala eta arauen eragina areagotzeko estrategiak baliabidez ondo hornitzea, prekarietatea genditzeko eta lehiakortasuna areagotzeko. Eta ipatu den azken kapitala, kapital politikoa izan da. Eta kapital politikoa handitzeko aktiboak eta ekinbideak ipatzerakoan, iru aktibo, legedia, lankidetza eta kooperazioa ipatu dira, eta ekinbideak ere beste iru. Euskara eta legea lehenengoa. Errealitate soziolinguistiko ezberdinak eskatzen duten malgutasun haintzat hartuta, legearen eragin ahalmena erabiltzea Euskara beharrezkoa izan dadin gero eta esparru gehiagotan, ulermen mailatik hasita. Bigarrena, izkuntza lankidetza publiko soziala eta lurraldeen artekoa. Euskararen lurralde guztietako erakunde publiko eta gizartekoek elkar hartuta gartutea izkuntza politikak eta estrategiak bateratzen eta betearazten, lankidetzari lehentasuna eman da. Eta irugarren azkenik, izkuntza elkartasuna. Nazio arteko harreman zarea osatzea eta garatzea, munduko izkuntza gutxitu eta txikiekin, interes komunen alde elkarrekin lan egiteko eta batura horri esker eragin ahalmena irabazteko. Eta hau guztia, gazteizen 2000 eta mezortziko urriaren emeretzia. Mila mi azker. Bat zatozteenok, ba eskatuko diezuegu, baina sinadura ematea eta ondoren ja ekitaliaren bukaerara iritsiko gara. Iazkerkike, baina hori sebera, sinatzera animatzen basarete, honezkero egin ez baduzue, hemen daukazue maia eta orain da momentua, beraz altzatu poliki-poliki eta txikimendu eman horrela badagokio.
Jakin ere, orain sinatzen ari garen adirazpen hau, esko ikaskuntzaren eskuetan geratuko dela, gero alkarrekin kongresuaren baitan, eta hemen bere ala, amazortzigarren kongresuko lehendakariari, Sabir Alkortari eta Eusko Ikaskuntzako lehendakariari inaki dorron zorori emango zaiola. Amazortzi garren kongresu hau Euskal Herriaren etorkizuneko erronka nagusei begira sortua dago, dakizuenez. Eta goizean aipatu den bezala Eusko Ikaskuntza lau ardatz tematikoren inguruan lanean aritu da azken urteotan. Eta hori hobeto ezagutzeko, sinaduraren ondoren bideo laburtxo bat ikusiko dugu. Eta horrekin, gaurko saioaren amaiera horbilduko gara. Alegia, sinatu da gero ez joan bere ala, horrein dikan ere tartetxo txiki bat emango dugulako elkarrekin. Zaioa bukatzen denean gainera familiar gazkia egin behar dugu gaurko eguna gogoratzeko. Beraz, minutu batzu da euskago elkarrekin aurretik. Badoa hilara harintzen, sinadura geitzen, eta bere ala dirazpen hori dagokion eskuetara elduko da. Azken zinadurak eta bere ala atzikimendu guztiak eta dirazpena bera dagokion pertsonei emango zaie. Mugitu bera da maia bai. Zidek esan duen ez mugitzeko gehiegi, eh? Osa hor, maia horre lagun da edo? Hola. Eskina batean jautia kenduta da. Bueno, ba, sinadura guztiak eginak, atxikimendua emana, 
Ese es Kike eta Beñat, va a ir usted escuartean. ¿Y vos este berriro baina beste aldera? O la vuelta manda. Ñe foco a Anja Rico de Gu. Ta Beñatekin eta Kikerekin batera. Y vos ahí te se la hereba. Iñaki de Ronsoro, es que con saco leenda caria. Eta Xavier Alcorta, más o cigarra en congresuco. Eta Mendeurreneco, leenda caria. Te mendi que le va. Veste aldera covidean. Es que ricasco. Alara. Kike eta Beñatekin, izan ere, Kike eta Beñaten eskutik jazoko dute adierazpena eta atxikimenduak. Zan bezala txikimenduak eta adierazpena bera Eusko Ikaskuntzaren baitan geratuko dira kongresu honen testu inguruan. Torren irudikapena, oraintze bizitzen ari garena. Eta behin eman da, Xavier Alkortak hartuko du itza. Bueno, hineki gure lehendakarien baimenarekin. Hemen protokoloa mantendu behar dugu eta eta naiz eta talde lana izan gaina hemen hemen gaur jasotzen dugu nau ni uste birakurketa daukala e, bat talde batetik e, kongresuaren emaitza edo kongresuaren ibilbide honetako orain arte egin degun emaitza bat dela baina baita badauka honek beste irakurketa esango nuke eusko ikaskuntza mailan irakurketa politiko bat hau da kontseilu rektoreak aztertu beharko duena Eta egia esan, hogeita iru eta hogeita laua daukagula oinatin, hogeita irua izango da e, kongresuaren bukaera, maion hogeita lauean aldarrikatu nahi dugu. Orain arte egin degun bidetetik eusko ikaskuntzak gure ustez ze etorkizunean ze papera bete beharko lukeen e, danen aurrean eta batez ere instituzioen eta erakundeen aurrean. Eta horregatik han pentsatzen dut, hemen jasotzen deguna atal bat dela, Hone, erantziko diogu, e, baita ere datorren astean, e, ir, iruñan, e, giza, gizartaren anistasunari eta komunikabideari e, eskeniko diogun, ba, tartea eta anitik aterako dian ondorioak, gero bilbotik ongizatearen etorkizunarien buruz egingo degun hausnarketaren emaitzak, baita ere enpresa eredu eta Arreman laboralearen inguruan egingo deguna eta borobilduko dugu hori demokrazia eta gobernantzari buruz donostian egingo degunakin. Kusti horrekin, azaldu nahi dut, e, liburu zuria ekoizten ari gerala eta hau parte bat izango dela. Eta nik ez de gehiago luzatu nahi baino bai, ez de nahi bukatu gaurko guna, pixka zuekin parte katzen e, gaur hemen egin deguna, beste urratz bat izan dela, Gaste hu ikusten eusko ikaskuntza erakunde itxi edo laboratorio baten gaudela, baizik eta gu guztio gehala eusko ikaskuntzan. Zuek, zuen asko gainera izan zerate aurreko lehenengo bigarren eta irugarrengo mintegian, orduan gaur saiatu gera eta ustet e, tanak e, posi gaudela e, orain arte egin deguna danon artean parte katzen. Hau, danen e, lanen ondorena izan da eta eskertu nahi nuke berriro josune eta Gaur horlako harito elegante baten e, aukera izan deguela, ziratikan e, eman dezuen babesatik, han ere bai, oso ondo gidatu dezulako gaurko hemen, hemen golana, parte hartu dezuten guztiak ez nik guaipatzea, baina nik uste dut e, azkenean gaurko eguna oso eman korra izan dela, eta bueno, bi urratz egin ditugu, eta gombidatzu, gombidatzen zaituztegu, alde zuten neurrian, ba urrengo saioetan gurekin egotea eta bereziki albaldi bada zute oinatin 23an eta 24an denei eskerrik asko nere partitik eta inaki nahi bezu itxi bueno, komplementarioa da eh inaki e, Xabirik esan duen apart aratago eh hemen e, sinatuta jaso dugun eh inaki urbildu pizka el mikrofono bai hemen jaso dugun sinatutako adirazpen hau Gaur Eusko Ikaskuntzako aldi berean e, adierazten du instituzio honek bere gain hartzen duen responsabilitate ikeregarri bat. Zatik gogoratuko dizuet, 
gaurko esku ikaskuntzan, hausnarketa, debateak eta proposanak egitea da elburu bat, baina hoien artean beste elburu bat da baita gure erakunde publiko eta politika diseinatzen dituen hoietan influentzia bat eragin zuzen bat egitekoa. Orduan, Eusko Ekaltzako lenda gari bezala, eta Eusko Ekaltzako bezala, hemen jasotzen dugun kompromiso hau, zuen lanari esker, gure gainartzen dugu, eta hemen kompromitetzen gara, erakunde publiko eta politika diseinatzen den horretan, ahalik eta influentzia gehien izatera iristea. Eta jasotzen duguna, zuen lanari esker da, eta gaur ez dugu bukatzen, baizik, abia puntuan jarri gera, eta aurrerantzean ere zuen laguntza eta lana deitzen dizu. Mila esker, eta ikusiko gera. Osondo. Mila esker, Iñaki eta Xavier. Bukatzeko firme bat, zazpi minutu dira, eh? Mugatuta, ikusteko eta bukatzeko. Eskerik asko. Berritzaileak orain eta berritzaileak bere sorreran, mila behatzireun da emezortzian, oinatiko lehen eusko ikaskuntzen kongresuaren ondorio sortu zenean. Orduan, Arabako, Bizkaiko, Gipuzkoako eta Nafarroako foru aldundiek bultzatu zuten. Eta egun, erakunde horiek bere kompromisoa berretsi eta eusko jaurlaritza eta iparraldeko erkidegoa gehitu dira. Eusko ikaskuntzako masa sozial zabala, zientziarekin eta kulturarekin, berrikuntzarekin eta aurrerapen kolektiboarekin kompromiso aktiboa duten pertsoneko satzen dute. Beti ere, muga, jakintzagai, lurralde eta ideologien gainetik. Erakunde ireki bat gara eta elkarlana bultzatzen dugu. Akademia, gizartea eta erakundeak batuz. Hausnarketa sustatzen dugu etorkizunari so eginez, proposamen egingarriak lutzatzeko, beti ere Euskal Herriko iritarren kezkei begira. Galdera, Gizartea norari joan da, eta zeintzuk diren erronka berriak gure kultura eta herriaren bizimodua bermatzeko. Eta nire ustez, hau xeda, unerik egokiena orain gai hau hausnartzeko. Egun, bos proiektu nagusitan kokatuta dugu gure jarduna. Zatoz ezagutzera. Nuestro proyecto consiste en pensar y repensar el futuro socioeconómico de Basconia para el siglo XXI. Un futuro que afrontará grandes retos como consecuencia de la evolución demográfica y como consecuencia fundamentalmente de la transformación tecnológica. Euskalizkuntzan baino gehiago guk enfokea daukagu jarrita Euskal Komunitatean, edo Euskaraz garatu nahi duen komunitatean. Zentzu horretan, uste dut, zera proiektu honen bitartez, landuko dugula metodo bat, diskurso bat, eta eduki batzuk proiektzio izango dutenak, eta gainera, modu parte hartzale batean eta komunitario batean landuak izango direnak. Beraz, horrek gero hainbat erronketan izango du bere eraginak.
nagusiak dira anistasun egoera batetik abiatzea. Anistasuna e, maila guztietan gertatzen da, handia da eta orduan anistasun horrek erantzun desberdinak e, ematen ditu eta hortik harreman gatazkatzuak sortzen dira. Orduan gatazka horien kudeak eta izango litzateke erronka nagusia. Esako nuke galdera bati erantzuna ideola, eta ba, Euskal Lurraldeek ze agenda beharko lupeten hogeita bat garremendeari aurre egiteko. Eta nori batean, e, Euskal Gaskuntzak doela egun urte e, egin zuen lana, eta bete zuen papera errepikatzea izango letzateke. Orduan, e, modernizazioaren uinean zeho murgilduta Euskal Gaskuntza, eta kasontan, e, hogeita bat garremendean, globalizazioaren uinea hartzeko e, taula bat eskeni nahi du Euskal Gaskuntzak, eskeni nahi dio Euskal Gizarteari. Nahi genuena zen gaur egungo erronkak identifikatu eta hasi pentsatzen ze bide horratu genezaken erronka horretatik eh, edo erronka hoietatik hasi eta. Foro hauetan bukaeran adostasun batetara eltzen ginen adimen kolektiboari esker eta koturatzen gara etorkizuna gaurtik azten garela sortzen. Eusko Ikaskuntza naiz. Yo también soy Eusko Ikaskuntza. Felicidades Eusko Ikaskuntza. Zorionak Eusko Ikaskuntza. Ni ere Eusko Ikaskuntza naiz. Yo también soy Eusko Ikaskuntza. Zorionak Eusko Ikaskuntza. Ni ere Eusko Ikaskuntza naiz. No som Eusko Ikaskuntza. Ni ere Eusko Ikaskuntza naiz. amaiera ematea eta horretarako lekukoaren eskualdatzea irudikatuko dugu gurekin egun osoan zer egon den lekukoa handagoena eskualdatuko dugu urrengo saioko arduradunei pasatuko zaie lekuko hori beraz eskualdatze hori egiteko mesedez 
Igo gaurko eta gaur sortzi duñan egingo den saioko arduradun zientifikoak, Iñaki Marko eta Julen Zabalo, eta igore bai proiektu sustatzaileak Josune Etzaniz eta Beatriz Akizu, Mercedes. Hemen dago mikrofono. Bueno, eskerrik asko. Eskerrik asko, mila mila esker. Komunitatea itza aipatu dut nik behin baino gehiagotan. Eta gaur hemen egin duguna komunitate batek denboran zehar esan bezala bi urtez egindako lanaren ondorioa eta emaitza eta presentzia da. Asko aritu gara askok egin dugu lan hemen modu desberdinetan, modu edo rol desberdinak jokatuz. Baina daanen lanaren emaitza da gaur hemen dagoena. Bai mintegietan parte hartu duten pertsonena, bai mintegi hoiek antolatzen aritu direnena, bai taldera gilean nolabait honen gidaritza edo burutzen aritu direnak, bai Eusko ikaskuntzaren eta kongresuaren eta mende horrenaren proiektua nola bait irudikatu zutenena. Bai, itzaldiak, itzaldien bitartez bere ekarpena egin dutenena. Bai, idatziz gaur ekarpenak egin dituzuena. Eta bai, eta ere, hemen entzunez gaur zaudetenena. Beraz, komunitate hori gabe ez litzateke posible. Eta idei hori uste dut agertu dela behin baino gehiagotan, Azken itzaldi honetan ere agertu da idei hori eta azpimarratu nahi dut. Esan baita ere, azken testu honek guretzat balio haundia duela, izango du bere bilbidea. Esan baita ere, edozein beste edozein testu bezala bere utxuneak dituen testu badala eta ekarpen batzuk ere jaso ditugu nola baita adenda moduan edo testua, en fin, testuari gehitzeko, testua Ez du gara inaldatuko, baina bai nola bait gehitzeko edo adenda gisa zehatzeko jaso ditugula berazo hoiei ere mila esker. Eta besterik ez? Hortxe lekukoaren eskualdatze ditu dikapena. Esku batzuetan dago momentuz, baina oin aldatuko da eskuz. Ez ilusinua egiten digu, ez da, hartzea Eusko Ikaskuntzaren emezortzi garren kongresuko lekuko txoa, baina igartzen saio energiaz betetzen ari da, bi urte hauetako energiaz betetzen ari da, baionan jasotako ekarpenak luzatutako energiaz betetzen, gaur jaso ditu energia gehiago, Eta ez dakien isia bier, baina hemen dik oinatira bizidun bihurtuko zaigu eta zerbait esango digula oinatin ziur baietz. Guri begira jarriko da lekukua eta lekuko horri denok eldu biharko diegu eta erantzuna eman. Sokaren ingura gauza asko posible dira esan ez da, tiraka ibili gara askotan, jolasean batzutan, baina beste batzutan ez, baina gure sokatxoak Lotzen irudikatzea nahi du, lotuneak sortze, elkarrekin etorkizuna ideikitzea. Espero dugu irakasteare konplexutasuna, konplexutasunaren txirikordak interpretatzen laguntzea. Ibilbide honetan sozioekonomiarekin lotutako txirikordak interpretatzen. Demokrazian onarritutako gobernantzare du berrietan ere euren txirikordak interpretatzen. Irunian landuko ditugun anistasuna eta koesio bideek eskaintzen dizkiguten txirik ordak ere, eta josten, ea josten laguntzen digun ere, lurraldea josten, lurraldetasuna irudikatzen, Euskal Herria irudikatzen. 
Eta, bueno, hartzen dugu energia txiki hau, pentsatuz gorpusten gorpuste jungo dela, eta iruñara eramango dugu, Nafarroera jungo gara, eta Nafarroan ere energiaz betetzea nahi dugu oinatirako bide honetan. Iruñean, gizartea, anistasuna eta koesioa. Bai, gaur... Bai, gaur bain baino gehiagotan aipatu dira iztunak, euskera eta iztunak. Datorren astean, hain zuzen ere, euskeraren herria zitze egingo dugu, euskal herria gai hartuta, horrek zentratuko du, eta euskal herriaren barruan dagoen anistasuna. Gaur gehiago zen, euskera aitzin arazi, zelan lortu iztunak, zeintzuk izan behar diren mugimendu berriak, datorren astean gaia izango da anistasuna oinarri dela, eta orduan anistasun horren barruan zer egin dezakegun, zelan koesionatu hori izango litzateke gakoetako bat, baina koesionatu anistasuna oinarri hartuta. Badago diferentziaren bat, badaude gaiak lantzeko, gaur asko aipatu da, empatia aipatu da Mikel Irizarrek, datorren astean empatia kontzeptu horri lotuta, hitz egingo dugu konfiantzaz, zelako konfiantza lortu behar dugun Euskal Herritarren artean, anistasun hori oinarri hartuta, eta Euskal Herria zentro izan da, nolako konfiantza giroa eta nolako konfiantza hildoak sortzen ditugun Euskal Herriaren bide hori koesionatzeko. Eta hori izango da datornazteko plana edo, goizean gehiago zentratuko gara anistasunean, etorriko dira Kataluniatik etorriko da ditu bat, eta gero Nafarroatik Nafarroako kasu berezia ere aipatuko zaigu, eskuntzarekin ere egingo dugu lotura bat, eta arratzaldean gehiago zentratuko gara komunikabidetan eta komunikabideen inguruan egon daiteken komplexitate guztia. Eta hori ze, datorren astean orduan, nahi izan ezkero, iruñean zaudete denak gombidatuta. Ezkerrik asko. Ezkerrik asko zuei, amaiera itz energetiko hauekin agur esango dizuegu, mila mila ezker guztioi gaurkoan hemen izateagatik, eta azken azken oartxo bat, orain irteterakoan familia argazki bat egingo dugu gaurko eguna gogoratzeko, horoitzapen polit bat izateko, beraz ez joan oso azkar, joan poliki poliki, zarreran egingo dugu argazkia, eta horrela gurtuko gara mila mila esker eta azte guru ononaizan, eta kongresuak bide ona jarrai dezala.